So if you guys were on my live the other day, you heard me talking about the fact that I was going to be doing a review of a reviewer's line of fragrances. So you guys all know that guy, Gentsense. Um, he did a collaboration, and I know I'm late to the game here, but I'm also a newer reviewer. Um, but with that said, he, I was sent all of these from T-Frag, one of my subs, so thank you, T-Frag. I'm going to be reviewing Gensense, which he was the creative director in the Galleria Parfums. And so I'm going to be going over, I have seven. I don't know if that's all of them. I'm pretty sure it is. I'm going to be going over and ranking all seven of the fragrances that I have here from Victorian Tobacco uh, to uh, Cognac Cafe, all of them. So without further ado, let's get it. <laughs> All right, my great smelling dudes, welcome back to my channel. This is Randy, AKA Fragrance Dude, back with another fragrance video. Thank you so much for joining me again. Uh, before we get into the video, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff so we can get straight into this. Again, there is Gensense, another reviewer that you guys probably all know, one of the most popular reviewers on uh, uh, YouTube. But with that said, he also created, um, as a creative director, a bunch of different fragrances in different lines, but the one that he's most known, uh, known for is the Galleria Parfums. I'm going to be reviewing and ranking them now, starting from number seven. And number seven, if I can find it here, probably should have put them in order before I started this, is this. It is Victorian Tobacco. I'm sorry if you can't see the names, but I will put the bottles up there on the screen. Um, but Victorian Tobacco is the only one from the entire line I can say I hate. Um, I started out this journey about a month and a half ago where I started smelling them and I didn't really like many of them to start out with. They grew on me as time went, but Victorian Tobacco, if anything, it just got worse. So the, some of the main notes you get in Victorian Tobacco are tobacco, oak, guyac wood, beeswax, tonka bean, and vetiver. So the way that this fragrance work, works is there's a woody spiciness in the opening. It's kind of strong, it is harsh, it's in your face. Um, there's also this odd smoke, maybe from the vetiver, I can't really tell. Uh, and then when you get to the dry down, you get a little bit of the tobacco and some of that um, beeswax, but for the most part, the fragrance is just so muddled and just so, just not good. It just smells dirty, it smells dry, it smells dusty. It's just not one of those fragrances that I like. Um, based on what I've heard from other people, they also don't like Victorian tobacco. I'm not going to spend forever on each of these fragrances unless I'm truly interested in them. But Victorian tobacco, even though it's called tobacco, I don't. I get more woods and spice than tobacco. Um, but in the dry down, you do get like a sweet beeswax mixed with the tobacco, which is where the fragrance isn't terrible, but it's just still not for me. And I would rank it probably a 6.0 out of 10. Not one that I would ever pick up or even consider picking up. Uh, from there on, the fragrances are not, they, they get better. Um, so the next one on the list is called Moving Times. Some odd names here, but it's called Moving Times. And so this fragrance, the main notes that you get in it are bergamot, lemon, iris, and tonka bean. So there's slightly green hints in this fragrance, mixed around a wallop of iris, as well as some citrus and vanilla. Um, if you wanted to dumb down the fragrance, citrus in the opening, middle is iris, then the iris kind of takes over the fragrance, and then you have vanilla mixed in there. And that's pretty much the bulk of the fragrance. It also only lasts about two to three hours. Um, it died down on my skin so quickly. It's not a terrible fragrance whatsoever, but it's just not one that I would ever pick up because moving times just doesn't last long. It also doesn't project heavily, and it also doesn't have notes that I thoroughly enjoy. The iris isn't done well like you would see. You can tell that it was made by a reviewer or in collaboration with the reviewer. It just wasn't put out there that nicely. Um, but it's still okay. It's one that if somebody gave me a bottle, I probably would wear it as a random pull from time to time. But um, because it doesn't last very long, I can't see myself wearing it outside of that. So those are the two that I'm gonna get rid of and start talking about the ones I do enjoy. So the next one on my list, let me see, is Dream Woods. This is number five on my list. So Dream Woods. Okay, um, 
So the main notes that you get in Dream Woods are ginger, lavender, tonka, and vanilla. So it is very similar to something like Jean-Paul Gaultier's Ultramol, where you get this like lavender vanilla mixture. Uh, you also do get some ginger in there to give it another sweetness, some, some pop. And then all, like you guys know, there's ginger. It gives it a little bit of that snap, as I call it. But for the most part, if you want to dumb it down, it's very similar to something like Ultramol. Not exactly, but it does have very subtle hints of that, or similar facets to Ultramol with that lavender, with that uh, vanillic tone. There's also that tonka bean, I believe. Um, and that's pretty much what you need to know about it. If you know what Ultramol smells like, it's more of your nighttime fragrance. It's more of your clubbing, going out fragrance. The only thing is, is that compared to Ultramol and other fragrances that are in the same category as Dreamwood, which is why I put this at number five, I believe, um, is that it doesn't, it projects heavily for about a half hour or so, but then it kind of dissipates. It does last for about six hours on your skin. It's just, it kind of feels a little bit harsher than those other fragrances and a little bit more synthetic. I don't know if there would be one that I would pick up, which is again why I put it at number five, but Dream Woods, it's lavender, it's lavender heavy, as well as ginger. And then once you get into the base, it's more of a vanilla fragrance with subtle hints of powder from Tonka Bean and then also a little bit of aromatics in there as well. But again, that is Dream Woods. That is number five on my list. Ones that it was really hard for me to choose one through four. And I would buy full bottles of all of these. With that said, I do have to tell you, um, the reason I haven't bought a full bottle of any of these and I'm a month and a half in is because there are certain issues with each fragrance. But if they smell great, they might not last long. Um, if they smell amazing in the dry down, they might have a terrible opening and only good longevity but poor per, uh, projection. There are certain issues and I'm trying to work them out to which ones don't have them. And I'm pretty sure the top two don't have that many issues. But with that said, the next two do still have some longevity issues or some odd fragrance scents in there that I'll tell you about. First one being Dusk to Dawn. So some odd names here, but uh, with that said, we're looking at the fragrance and the main notes you get in Dust Till Dawn are cardamom, amber, patchouli, and vanilla. So if you know what Prada Black is, it doesn't smell like Prada Black, but the type of fragrance it is where it's simplified, it's ambery and spice. And that's what this fragrance is for the most part. For the, when I say the most part, the first 10 minutes is more of like, it has this animalic, animalic quality to where I saw people on Fragranica actually were calling it similar to African leather. But after you get first, first past the first five, 10 minutes, there's no uh, African leather mixture or anything like that. The animalic quality is not off-putting. It's actually quite nice and it fits into the fragrance well. I actually wish that it would work its way further into the fragrance, even though it didn't. But again, that um, comparison to African leather is gone after about five to 10 minutes. So the opening, you get this incense spice mixed with a little bit of that sweet amber and then that animalic quality, which I don't know where it's coming from. But with that said, once you get to 10 minutes, it's gone, so don't worry about it. Uh, when you get past that, the main notes you need to know are the amber, the benzoin, and then there's also a um, vanilla and tonka bean, I believe, that are in there. And what it is, is it's an amber spicy vanilla fragrance in the base. It's sweet, it's slightly creamy, very resinous with this nice spice working away around it, either from, uh, there's a bunch of different spices that are in there, but it's just kind of like masking the entire sweet ambery fragrance. Uh, it's kind of simple in the dry down and it lasts about six hours, but it only projects heavily, like above average for the first hour. And again, that's where it kind of draws back because there's that animalic quality in the opening that doesn't quite stay there and then it turns into a different fragrance. And then you also don't have the greatest projection for the most part of the fragrance. But Dust Till Dawn, still a really nice fragrance if you like sweet, ambery, vanilla, spicy fragrances that have a bit of a twist, that would be the one that you like. Moving into number three. Number three is actually I could have put as number one. I had it as number one until about about five minutes before the video. And then I smelled it on uh, on my hand and I was like, yeah, I'm putting that at number three because there is an issue with it and I'll tell you. So this one is called Shades of Seduction. Uh, so the issue that I found is that it is too close to two other fragrances mixed together uh, that I've smelled before. And so with that, 
it didn't give me that unique factor, so I put it as number three. The main notes you get in Shades of Seduction are cardamom, amberwood, benzoin, and cinnamon. So there's two fragrances here that it really reminds me of. It's a mixture of the cardamom from Lanoui de Lome, uh, and that is in the opening, and it goes for quite a while in the fragrance. It's like a fresh spiciness, mixed with parfums de Marly Layton without the apple. Uh, so you get that cinnamon, the aromatics, the sweetness, the ambery vibes, and you mix that all together. You can get that vanilla. It's very similar. If you actually smell this fragrance, even right now, it smells very similar to Layton. And once you spray it, you can't smell the cardamom when you're smelling it from the cap or the atomizer. But as soon as you spray it on your skin, also don't spray it on paper because the cardamom does not come through on paper either. When you spray it on skin, this cardamom comes through and it reminds you a lot of Lanoui de Lome if it was put as a layer on top of Parfums de Marley Layton, which is actually going to be one that I'm going to try this winter or fall. I'm going to try to layer Layton and LNDL and see how they work. But uh, it does smell really nice. If you do like that sweet resinous amber as well as that uh, creaminess that you get and aromatic, almost slightly freshness that you get with Layton, um, you will know what, I, what I'm talking about as soon as you smell this. Um, and then you also get that fresh spicy cardamom. Shades of Seduction is a really nice fragrance, but that unique factor isn't there like they are in number one and two. But again, it's sweet. It has that cinnamon. It has that vanilla. It has that creaminess. It has that aromatics and that fresh and spiciness. So that is Shades of Seduction. Really nice fragrance. Fall and winter, mostly fragrance. Maybe early spring, depending on where you live. So now we're getting into the prized possessions of the line. The two that grew on me the most. This one that I'm about to uh, name is my favorite fall and wintertime fragrance from the line. And surprisingly, I don't really like Jensen's taste. I mean, his taste is very selective. He likes the more mature, super manly fragrances, the leathers, the tobaccos. And while I do like them in certain cases, I don't like them as much as he does. Uh, so I wasn't surprised that I didn't love half of these fragrances. With that said, I am super shocked that a fall and wintertime fragrance didn't win this list. It was actually a fresh fragrance. But to get into number two, this is Cognac Cafe. And this is the fall and wintertime fragrance. The main notes that you get in this are coffee, brown sugar, almond, vanilla, cognac, and sandalwood. And you would think by Cognac Cafe, it would be a boozy fragrance through and through. But really what you need to know from that uh, is cafe, not the cognac part, even though there is parts of booziness in this. And there's also the cafe part is what you need to notice because it's a coffee fragrance. Uh, somebody I talked to said it the best. Um, it's not like a roasted coffee. It's more like a coffee grind with vanilla creamer. Uh, if you mix those together, that is what you get for the most part of this fragrance with a little bit of this like cognac or booziness. It doesn't feel like a cognac or a rum or anything. It just feels like a booziness in the background. And then you also do get a little bit of spice in there and also a little bit of nuttiness from the almond. But for the most part, if you want to dumb it down, it's a creamy vanilla coffee fragrance and it's actually quite nice. It's one that I will end up buying. It's going to be one that I'm going to end up loving to wear in the morning, especially when I'm waking up for work. I'll spray it on. I'll get that nice coffee, coffee feeling. Uh, but again, it's not going to be like a warm coffee, but it's just going to wake you up because you're going to get that coffee feeling in your face. It feels really nice. A little bit spicy, but for the most part, it's just vanilla. It is a little bit creamy with that uh, coffee as well as a little bit of nuttiness from the almond and some booziness in the background from the cognac. That is Cognac Cafe. Really nice fragrance. I am really surprised that he made something like this because, again, his tastes are usually a little bit different than mine. But that one is really nice and I suggest that you guys need to try those out. Uh, I believe they're $120 right now on sale. Um, I still think that I would probably pay under a hundred for these type of fragrances. So I'll probably look on eBay. And so now into the winner of the list. So I wasn't surprised by Cognac Cafe. He's always hyped up the uh, Halloween Man X coffee fragrance, but he always said he wanted to make a better one. And so I'm not surprised that he made a coffee fragrance and one that I liked. Uh, the one that I am surprised about is that this is a fresh fragrance. It won it all. And it's of a fragrance that I usually don't like that much. A note called Yuzu. If you don't know what yuzu is it's just it's very similar to like a lemon it's a citrusy it's a very heavy citrus which is why i usually don't like it but he does it very nice in this and this is called by the yuzu grove 
Uh, so this is a fresh fragrance, spring and summer. You can't really wear it outside of that. The main notes that you get in it are yuzu, ginger, olibanum, clary sage, sandalwood, and cedar. So I did see, I wanna get this out of the way. If you go in Fragranica, I know a lot of people look at those compared to fragrances and they compare it to Wood Neroli by Bulgari and I, it doesn't smell like that at any point in time, this fragrance. Uh, that smells like a log, like a, like a wet log. This does not smell like that. Um, it's like a wet log with Neroli. While there are points in the time that it has woods in there and it has like that Neroli facet, the florals, it never really goes too heavy on them. It is a yuzu fragrance through and through. So when you first spray it on, you do get some of that yuzu as well as you do get lemon, which isn't mentioned in the notes. You can tell there's two different citruses in there and they mix them together very nicely. Uh, you also do get a little bit of this fizziness as well as you do get some creaminess from the sandalwood, even though it says it's in the base, it does come up. It almost has like a creamy vanilla woodiness to it, which is actually quite nice when you mix it with that citrus. So, sorry, my uh, battery went down. But with that said, so you get that yuzu, you get the citrus in the opening. Um, then you also, as you work your way into the mid, you do get some florals in there, but it's never too heavy of a floral. You guys know I don't like florals that much, and the way that they do it in By the Yuzu Grove is perfect. It mixes with those citrus notes to where it doesn't feel too florally, doesn't feel too citrusy, it's just a really nice mixture. Then as you work your way further into it, down to the dry down, that is where you get those aromatic notes. You get those woody notes from the cedar, from the sandalwood. Again, a little bit more creamy. It does get creamier and creamier as you get to the dry down. As the floral notes start to dissipate, that yuzu and lemon are still there. And you can tell the yuzu becomes more prominent at this point in time, and it stays there for about three hours. The fragrance lasts about five to six. But for a fresh fragrance, I didn't expect much more. Fantastic fragrance. It has those aromatic facets, those floral facets. It has those citrusy facets. It's good throughout. It's just a really nice fragrance and one that I was shocked that I liked. If you guys like citrusy fragrances and want to try one that is very well blended, I have to say congratulations. Well done, Ash. Really nice with By the Yuzu Grove. Uh, also with Shades of Seduction and Cognac Cafe. Those are all banger fragrances. Um, I didn't like them at first. It had a lot of these. If you ever buy them, you have to get your nose around them because they are complex. Um, the only one I don't like from his entire line is Victorian Tobacco. Maybe Moving Times, but the rest of the fragrances, they are definitely very nice. Definitely worth a look. Although I think the top three, maybe top two, were the ones I'm gonna buy a full bottle of. But thank you guys so much. Let me know in the comments if you've tried these, what you think of them. Uh, again, he has a uh, set on the website, Gallery of Parfums website. It's a introductory kit. And so if you guys wanna try that out, they give you all of these. There might be one or two more. I honestly don't know. Again, I got this sent by T-Frag. So again, thank you T-Frag. And I hope you guys like this video. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll be back with another one. Peace.